Hello, it's me. It's Mesa Falcon Guy, and I'm here with Hearthstone Guy Raren, and I am going to show you Ravnica City of Kilts. I know Cards. we I know we talked about it, but I didn't think you were actually going to go through with it. I, you know, yeah, I've been told you just have to lean in and embrace it. You just, I'm just that guy now. I've got my, I'm holding it up to the camera. I've got my Mesa Falcon right here next to my computer. All right, it's it's always there to remind me in case chat ever <laughs> forgets to remind me. <laughs> Perfect. Oh my goodness. Uh, yeah. So uh, I am excited today to have you rate pairs. I'm going to show you two cards that are from the same expansion, and that expansion is Ravnica City of Guilds. And you are going to guess which one saw competitive play and which one basically did not. Almost all of these pairs are a winner versus a loser, which is kind of exciting and a little all or nothing. Okay. Are you excited? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was gonna, cause uh, the videos that we do are, when I do the pairs, it's like, which one is just better? Cause both of them could see play. Yours is if a card is good or not, the other one's just bad. All right. One is usually bad, Ugh. very bad. Okay. It, it, it was an interesting meta. It was an interesting time for sure. This came out in September of 2005. September 2005. Okay. Yeah. And this is one of the sets. This has happened a few times in Magic history, but people who know, know. The set that rotated when this came out was the Mirrodin block. This was one of the times that Magic almost died because Mirrodin oh. block was 100% just broke Magic the Gathering. It broke standard, it broke older formats, it broke everything to a bad, in a bad way that people just weren't showing up for their tournaments. Like attendance was significantly down. Enthusiasm for the game was down. Ravnica City of Guilds is the set that rotated Mirrodin block, which maybe I'll show you someday. That could be fun. Okay. But it, in a lot of people look at it as a set that saved magic because not only did it turn out to be a very fun and cool set, the setting of Ravnica actually is now beloved. There have now been several Return to Ravnica sets. There's literally a set called Return to Ravnica. I think we've done four sets on Ravnica. People love Ravnica. And you know why? Why? I'm gonna tell you. Okay. You're, <laughs> I, picked this, I picked this one because you're gonna like it because of the Hearthstone thing. Ravnica focuses on two color combinations. So like, Ooh, uh, like putting blue and white together, okay. like gold cards are more common on Ravnica than single color cards in a lot of circumstances. Okay. All right. That's exciting. So yeah, all of the, all of the guilds as they're called have their own little guild name, like blue and black is Demir and red and white is Boros. And they've all got their own kind of identity as color pairs. And you can mix and match and go to the color pair that best suits your play style, which uh, the, the player base absolutely loved. They absolutely loved it. Okay. You got me hyped. I'm excited. So I'll show you a pair in just one second. The one more thing I want people to know, because I always get the comments of, well, this saw play here and this saw play here. We're using a site called MTG Top 8, which goes through tons of competitive results from standard and tells me how often a card showed up in top eights. So this isn't the local pre-release that you went to when you were 12 <laughs> years old and that your little brother top aided with this silly card that you now need to write me a novel about its undervaluedness. Okay? Okay, these are legit competitive top eights that we're comparing. So, without further ado, here comes, well, your first pair. You're really good at the uh, the intros. I'm like watching a like a movie narrator, you know, when they when they drop. I'm either covers. really good at it or I take too long. And now I'm trying to drag and drop these images, and they won't drag from the document I set up, so I have to drag <laughs> them from the image folder. <laughs> so. No, you're good, you're good. Actually, most of that was just fluff and stalling to get this done because I had to pivot. <laughs> you were good, no worries. We, we, we could just cut that from the video. Oh yeah, sure. Uh, Libby, cut that out. Cut, cut it from the video. All right, here we go. Yeah. Nice. All right, uh, Blazing Archon, six neutral mana, three white. It has flying, creatures can't attack you. Sorry, you as it, <laughs> like, like you as the person or like this character? Or this creature, sorry. You. I, I, 
that's a Hearthstone thing. You can't just attack a creature. You can't just drop everything you know, and attack a creature. You are so creature right. Magic. You, sorry, I have been. There's too. I've been playing too much Hearthstone. No, no, this is great. This is a good start to the show. Okay, I, <laughs> dude, it's going from like the combat from Magic to Hearthstone is always just so bad at the start because I have to remember. Yeah, like oh, you can block. That's of course. Okay, so it can't attack your hero, and it's a five six. So let me just get something straight here before I even go to the next card. If I don't block with any of my creatures, what happens to my opponent's attacks while this is on the board? If I don't block with any of my creatures, what happens to my opponent's attacks while this is on the board? Like, can they even, cause this says it can't attack you, right? So yeah. How do they, can they just not attack if this is on board? Correct. Oh. They go to their attack phase. They look at their creatures. They pull out a Kleenex, they <laughs> cry salty tears, and they pass. Okay. That seems like a pretty good effect. Fire main angel, three neutral, one red, two white, flying first strike at the beginning of your upkeep. If fire main angel is in your graveyard or in play, you may gain, you may gain one life. My God. Uh, six neutral, two red, two white. Return this card from your graveyard to play. Play this ability only during your upkeep. Oh my God. So this is like infinite value as long as you have the lands for it it's a very specific thing though dude i see the thing is like now that you've told me one card is way better than the other one i i am leading to like this archon card because that seems very strong if you're if this is an auto win if your opponent can't attack against some decks like, do i really need to gain one life i like, see we've done too many of these videos now where i think you're in my head hmm. really mm -hmm. you think that it's pretty easy what do you mean you think it's like you think one is just clearly the right one yeah creatures can't attack you brother that's a it's a trump card right there if you don't have an answer to this and you're an auto what do they call it? an attack based deck i guess an aggro deck not an aggro deck but attack based deck like they just lose like what do they do you don't have to do anything unless they have removal and then you're just crying but why do i care about a four or three that may give me one life I guess you get it automatically and it has first strike, but I don't know. I'm going to go with the first one. I think the first one's broken. Like, I, I feel like that would be meta defining if you'd have to, you'd always have to think about that card going against the white deck. So I'm going to say that's the better card. Blazing Archon. Yeah. That's the pick. Yeah. Yeah. Don't tell me it's bad. There's no way. Unfortunately for you, Blazing Archon did not see any competitive top eight play. To Wait, but, okay, but hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Why? <laughs> Why? The answer is in the upper right corner. Nine mana. We're going to set the phase, set the stage here. We don't play a lot of nine drops at this phase of Magic the Gathering Standard. It has become a, a fast okay. and ruthless format a fast and extremely Wait, what year is this i should have asked format. that i should have asked what year this was <laughs> 2005? all of these all of these are 2005 that's right 2005 magic the gathering and we're coming out of the muradin block which was the fastest i it might be the fastest that standard was outside of maybe some other insanely broken blocks so yeah it was really hard to get to nine mana and then once you did this doesn't protect itself five six stats are okay but a dies to doom blade has become kind of a saying it's really kicking in around this time and what that means is doom blade is a two mana instant that destroys target non-black creature so dies to doom blade became okay. a strategy sayism that people were just like oh well you played something for four mana that didn't do anything when enter the battlefield dies to doom blade it's unplayable <laughs> okay fair enough okay okay, okay. no i got you i got you i got you i actually I, I i think i just really overvalued like how good stopping your opponent's creatures from attacking oh it's good like that if seems... they don't have the answer it's the stone cold nuts it could shut them down but any aggro deck worth existence has already killed you probably on turn six at this point and this is a nine drop that's also fair okay on the other side fire main angel actually saw play in a deck called angel fire which was a control deck in the red and white colors which was pretty rare i know angel fire what a great name for a deck with a fire yeah angel. i was gonna say like <laughs> did they just take the deck name from the card 
<laughs> yeah, this deck used uh, another card whose name I won't discuss to basically set it up so that you were gaining life on a regular basis. You just threw this in your graveyard so that you survived the aggro attacks and you left it there. Most of the time, they didn't even bring this back. Although when they eventually did, they would probably start to win. But it's that passive ability of gaining one life while it's in the graveyard that kept you alive against the super aggressive decks that made Fire Main Angel playable. Interesting. See, you, you talk like uh, at six mana, that's going to come down early enough for that life to matter. It won't. Uh, but it says at the beginning of your upkeep, if it's in the graveyard, you may no, gain I, one life. For sure, for sure. But it, yeah. it what I mean is like you have to spend the six mana, then you have to wait one full turn for that one life to matter. So I guess you you get the 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 block with the creature potentially, but then after unless you find a way for a lower cost to put the card in the graveyard. You know what? You're so right. You're mm. so right. I complete. It's been a while. <laughs> it's been a yeah, while. It, yeah. Just just don't read the stats. Don't read the You're abilities. So right. Don't read okay. the price tag. Just read I, that passive little does something if it's in the graveyard. Quick disclaimer here. Quick disclaimer here. I have oh, okay. I have spent the past four days of my life playing twenty five hours of Hearthstone. I don't know how any other card game works anymore. I completely forgot the great. You can just put it in the graveyard and then it just starts gaining you the life. Because Hearthstone it's, doesn't okay. have that. That's this is good. We've, we've reverted you to a full Hearthstone gamer and you get to experience all of this from a fresh perspective. It's going to be great. Okay. It's going to okay. be great. I love this. We're coping on the very no, but first like, pick. This is going to be so much fun. Listen, listen. I have, I have played Hearthstone so much recently that I can't remember how any other card game functions. <laughs> like, it's so bad. Okay. No, I can yeah. Graveyard matters. Graveyard matters. Gotta remember. I gotta remember. Okay, yeah. I'm back. Graveyard matters. Yeah. All right. We're going to do the thing. We're going to do more things. We're okay. going to look at more cards. Okay, okay. All right. Three dreams, four neutral, one white. Search your library for up to three aura cards with different names. Reveal them and put them into your hand to shuffle your library. Okay. So basically five mana to draw three. What are aura cards? An aura card is an enchantment that attaches to a permanent on the battlefield and gives it some kind of property. Uh, an example of an aura, a very simple one would be like a one mana enchantment that gives the creature it is enchanting plus two plus two. It buffs stats okay. on one creature, for example. But they have they can have a number of effects. There are also auras. Uh, an example is pacifism that says enchanted creature can't attack or block that you could use in a defensive setting. Okay. Compulsive research two neutral one blue target player draws three cards then that player discards two cards unless they discard a land card so if they discard a land card they only discard one correct okay <laughs> i mean listen i maybe three dreams is good but then the second one seems absolutely disgusting and it's so cheap like later in the game that's so good early in the game that's good no there's no way it's three dreams right Five to draw three or pay three mana to draw three and potentially discard one. And often you're probably just going to discard one. No, there's no way it's three dreams, right? Hold on, hold on. No, it's two neutral, one blue. Like, that's so nuts. Search for your library. I guess, okay. The benefit of three dreams, at least, is you get to search in your library. And then you get to pick the auras that you actually need for that specific context. But it's five mana. No, I'm going with I'm going with compulsive research. I don't think that's a bad card. There's no way it's a bad card. Hmm. Compulsive research, huh? Don't don't versus hmm. three dreams. Three I dreams letting you search for just anything. Like you didn't even ask. There are auras that let you gain control of the opponent's creatures. Just steal okay. Them. Well, I mean, I okay. Fair enough. Whoa, 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 whoa! whoa. Before you backpedal, before you backpedal, you're right. Okay. No, 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 no. <laughs> I was, I was gonna say in in Hearthstone, there is a card that is three mana, draw three cards, discard one, and that card sees play. So like that's the mindset I had. Even if I got to pick very specific cards, you still have to you still have to have the mana afterwards to play them. I'd rather just draw three and probably discard one, most of the time. Yep. Yep, yep. Okay. It's it's compulsive research. Compulsive research became an absolute rock star. Three dreams became a very good dream, and people did try to build <laughs> decks around it. A lot of them were like control decks, getting auras that 
lock down the opponent's stuff or tried to imprison them with various effects. But it was all about compulsive research. This card played an important role in so many decks. Almost every mid-range and control deck ran compulsive research. In fact, Angel Fire, the deck we just oh. described, this was the only blue card it played in the main deck, so it could discard the angels into the graveyard. Ah, oh, okay. Yep, yep. I, that's the context right you there. You know what's crazy is even though we just went over that card, I didn't even consider just putting stuff in the graveyard. It's good. I just saw draw three, discard one. <laughs> yeah, in, in Magic, the graveyard is a resource. It's a gotta, big time resource. Yo, wake up, dude. <laughs> All right, yep, I'm back. Yep. I'm so back. Yeah, you're here. You're here. I'm gonna, I have to remember, I'm going to mark you with a little thumbs up. Oh, yeah, up, right, right, right. Okay. And a little thumbs down up here on your blazing archon. There we go. There we go. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. And on to the next one. Bright Flame. X neutral mana, two red, two white. Radiance. Bright Flame deals X damage to the target creature and each other creature that shares a color with it. You gain life to the damage dealt this way. Okay, so you mandatory you have to spend two red, two white but then you could decide how much extra mana you want to add to it, depending on how much damage you want to do. Yep. Okay. Lightning Helix, one red, one white. Lightning Helix does three damage to target creature or player and you gain three life. And it's an instant. Not gonna lie to you though, Bright Flame's kind of sick. That's a really cool card. The target creature and each creature with each other creature that shares a color with it. Okay, let me... Let me think about this in Hearthstone terms real fast. This basically says, deal damage to a target creature and every other creature in that creature's class. And then you also get the life from it. That's a potential huge swing turn. It's a lot. But you need the, I'm trying to think of like, that's, that's coming down. I mean, it's not even like that slow, I guess. Can I ask you just for context, how mm -hmm. much mana would like two damage cost for like a board clear? Or like an AOE spell. An AOE spell that did two damage to everything at this time. Just so, because uh, uh, that's a good effect. Um, and Hearthstone has some similar stuff to Bright Flame, but uh, what I'm basically saying is, is it really worth spending that much mana when you could maybe run something better? I can't remember what of that effect was legal at this time. I'm sure chat, I'm sure comments is going to pop off on me a little, but today we'd pay three mana for that effect pretty regularly three mana to deal two to everything mm -hmm. okay so that's actually man it's crazy how close hearthstone is it's like that card is it has so much potential lightning helix is just a good card two mana deal three and you gain three life that's all i swear to god half of these are like i was gonna say half of these are hearthstone cards but what i mean is hearthstone just looked at these and went wow we should use something like it yeah boom sick easy first one actually made Tem lightning helix basically twice which is funny oh yeah <laughs> just templated it there's <laughs> there's uh penance for priests which is two mana deal three and you're with lifesteal or i sure. forget the word yeah and then there you go uh warlock has the same spell but it's called drain soul does it go face no it does not that's the only difference here which means lightning helix has to be pretty nuts wait does penance go face i don't think penance will they wouldn't give that to priest. They would give that to red though. I don't know. I feel like lightning helix is the better card. It's really hard to tell how good bright flame truly is because it comes down to, do you need a better AOE? Cause yeah, you're healing, but there's also the chance that you could just not take the damage if you had a better AOE in the first place. So I think lightning helix is just the better card. You are correct. Yes. Lightning helix is the perennial all-star, uh, one of the more famous top decks in pro tour history uh the commentator literally screamed it's lightning helix oh my god for and it for is lethal. a very fa yep yeah, for, okay. for lethal straight off the top that's yeah, perfectly a good card. done yep 100 percent. excellent card great in damage races great in control to stabilize you great at going face it's all play for its entirety in standard and it's in standard right now they reprinted it in a recent set and it, it sees some play right okay. now even though the colors are kind of tough uh bright flame zero too expensive okay too expensive for the rate uh a 
popular card at this point was like two mana for a three three as a rate so just killing one of those takes seven mana it wasn't happening bright flame saw no competitive play <laughs> okay <laughs> it's not happening okay yeah you're telling it's right. not happening it, you could live the dream like i i had it in a limited once i built my whole thing around bright flame i think i gained 100 life on one board oh my God. which was beautiful nice. but in standard not really a thing okay yeah yeah makes sense makes sense it's uh it's a cool it's a dream card for sure what the hell is the first card <laughs> golgari <laughs> get in it go Gol get it so G golgari is the name of the guild that rep that is represented by black and green they like gross swamp stuff okay golgari Brave Troll. Four white, one green. Uh, when this comes into play with... This comes into play with a plus one, plus one counter on it for each creature in your graveyard. Okay. It is a zero, zero. You could spend one mana, remove plus one, plus one counter from this, and regenerate this. Wait, so does regenerate mean go in your hand, in your deck, or does it come on board? On board, you have to tap it and you prevent slash remove all damage uh and destroy oh. effects that would be affecting it this turn right so for, like for for that instance of regenerate not this turn but that specific destroy or damage effect that was about to remove it is prevented wait what it's like a one touch shield and as okay. long as you have the mana you can do it again it's open-ended and as long as you have the plus one plus one counter. you don't even have to tap it right you just spend the mana you have to tap the card Yes, you have to tap the card. But if the card's already tapped, it still works. Okay. If the card's untapped, you have to tap it. Regenerate's weird. It's old now, but uh, basically it's a way of like shielding your creature. Okay. Uh, and dredge, does that mean look at the bottom of your deck? Dredge might be an important part of the equation. Let me tell you about it. Okay. It is, uh, dredge is, if this card, how do, how do you put this? As a keyword, dredge is if this card is in your graveyard and you would draw a card, instead you may mill that many cards equal to the dredge amount and put this card in your hand instead of drawing a card. So, oh. example with this, if you if this is in your graveyard and you go to draw your card for turn, you may instead opt to dredge six. That means take six cards off the top of your deck throw them in your graveyard and you put golgari grave troll into your hand okay so theoretically speaking this this is the most annoying creature of all time this, this guy this guy seems so annoying and he only actually gets stronger right because if you dredge you discard the cards and they go into your graveyard that's right oh my yeah. god he's the goat all right what's the other card a okay, flow of ideas five neutral one blue this is a sorcery draw a card for each island you control that's the um, the blue mana right yep the blue okay. land oh my i mean you just showed me compulsive research what's the point of flow of ideas that's a hella expensive card this troll card seems so nuts oh my god it's infinite you'd be so annoying and every time you dredge you get stronger Oh my god, it's no way it's flow of ideas, right? <laughs> There's no way. Okay, let me think about this in Hearthstone for a second. If I had a creature that said I can remove plus one plus one from it to ignore spells so it wouldn't die. That's insane. Theoretically broken. You're also spending for the other one six mana to draw potentially like what? six mana let's play that let's say that or six cards for six mana i guess that's not too bad in 2005 magic that wouldn't be the worst but the fact that you showed me compulsive research first makes me think that this is bad because like what do, you, what do you do with the rest of your turn where like golgari here is like a win condition in itself i don't know i can't look at the flow of ideas and think it's a good card so i'm gonna, I'm gonna hope it's the grave troll here that card's not with the grave troll yeah i think it's i think that's so spicy please tell me i'm right the grave troll the grave troll is cracked okay. it's absolutely cracked the grave troll is absolutely stupid uh and uh, oddly all of that text and all those things that look cool about it are second they're secondary to the dredge six that little line on the bottom because what 
from the very minute this card was printed what people are trying to do with it is just throw it in their graveyard so they can use their draw step to make more graveyard and get paid for having graveyard there were so many cards yeah. that like you could retrieve from your graveyard that came back into play from the graveyard besides the troll itself that you just wanted to fill your graveyard and to this day there's still dredge decks across every single kind of format where this thing is legal this thing has been banned for periods of time in several formats but even early on in standard golgari Dra grave troll was building archetypes it's an absolute menace an absolute beast nice nice no, that's pretty broken now ba back in arabian nights i showed you bizarre baghdad and i talked about how like there were decks with no lands they were called manalus dredge they just tried to get their bizarre baghdad to draw two cards and discard three cards so they could like start dredging their right. whole deck right this was this is an this is one of the cards in that deck where you just want to chuck it in the graveyard and then start dredging your entire library into your graveyard to bring back creatures that like come out of the graveyard because you have this many creatures in the graveyard that kind of stuff it's it's interesting it's not even magic it doesn't play like magic it plays like a completely different game you which is pretty wild yeah yeah sure it's you <laughs> uh no but wait, did this one a tournament or no uh this this card has won many tournaments nice. and even early on in standard it did top eight several tournaments let me okay. see here that's actually a oh, it's such a cool effect arson's never had anything like that spend one mana i guess because you can't really interact on your opponent's turn but god that seems so annoying would you say in magic that minions are better than removal or reverse for a long time, removal was better than minions. And then over time, that uh, changed. And now I would say minions are better than removal. Uh, yes. Okay. So that means that magic is more focused on the board than it is anything else. Yep. 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 Now it is. Uh, it, it's been through phases. It's been through a lot of phases. Let's see. Uh, top eights for Golgari Grave Troll from uh, mtgtop8.com. 2201 matching decks jesus it's christ a lot. it's a beating the Two card thousand? is an absolute map yeah yep. that's a lot yep yep it's a lot and, and in fact going all the way back to like early standard there were some pretty cool decks that came out with this card i mean he looks like a beast bro i'm gonna be honest that's pretty sick damn let's see this card you like you see it in like nat like it, i think it was a brewer special because in its standard time you see a lot of things like nationals swiss nationals uh new zealand nationals uruguay nationals like it's top eight in great britain nationals right so like some some of the the international crowd was big into this in standard i mean dude he's the best look at him even his he's, posture he's, he's bro he's just balling he's crazy <laughs> All right, let's get you another juicy one. <laughs> Here we go. Yo, what the, what's that? What's that? What's that thing behind him? What is that? That big fucker. What? <laughs> <laughs> Which? What? The, the guy on the right of Dark Confidant. Who is that? What? Uh, uh, I don't know. I always. <laughs> I, I don't know what the heck that is to be honest it's pretty i mean one can't be a confidant if there isn't somebody who's like the person confiding right right but i mean <laughs> that's your confideer okay i guess that is but who is it i have no that, idea that's crazy right there i have no idea all right dark confidant one neutral one black at the beginning of your upkeep reveal the top card of your library and put that card into your hand you lose life equal to its converted mana cost so do you this card doesn't count as your draw do you also get the do you also get a draw you do do i even have to read the other card hold on you probably should okay <laughs> that, that seems pretty broken for uh that effect demira cut purse one neutral one white not one white one blue one black sorry uh when this card deals combat damage to a player that player discards a card and you draw a card okay hold on hold on we have a we have a contest here i dude i don't know I think that, see like yeah demir's good but dude that is so nuts. that's two card a turn i guess you lose life equal to its converted mana cost but i don't think that matters let me tell you a story a card called flame imp which has, was introduced in Hearthstone's classic. It's a one mana three, two that deals three damage uh, to your hero. That card has seen play forever. 
like it doesn't currently see play because there's not really a deck that supports it but for a really really long period of time that deck that flame imp was absolutely nuts and this is almost the same concept except for you're getting more cards than you are just like a good body on board this one the cut purse is not bad but like if i'm thinking it over two turns you have to play the cut purse it has summoning sickness and it also has to deal damage to a player dark confident is you play it sorry confident you play it you don't swing with it because it has summoning sickness if your opponent doesn't answer it and you just don't block you get two cards already so you're getting a card advantage and you just can choose not to attack with it i don't know the dark confidant it seems absolutely nuts also it's got that egg looking guy in the back so i'm pretty sure it's the best so you're going with the dark I'm, confidant. I'm going with <laughs> yeah i'm going with that okay okay i'm gonna okay. hit up ron is... spears for the art and ask him what the fuck that is <laughs> do it <laughs> uh do it all right this one was a lot of fun for me to set up dark confidant is the invitational card of bob maher which is why it has the nickname bob back in the day the best magic players in the world were invited to an invitational tournament and the winner got immortalized in the art of a card and they got to help design the card so okay. this was one of the classic best pro in the game this was their invitational card and when it was revealed everybody thought it was just going to be the absolute nuts and also it was. revealed oh. also revealed here in the same set is Demir cut purse when people saw this they saw a combination of Hypno hypnotic specter that also like drew a card so like getting not just a free card on every attack but two cards and they also thought this was the nuts and a lot of people wanted to build decks with both and there was a lot of debate in the community about which card would succeed so the set came out in october the pre-release was in september it came out in october of 2005 world championships was november of 2005 the card that top aided that event was demir cut purse you're kidding demir cut purse top aided the deck the event top aided the event as a four of in andre coimbra's deck and dark confidant did not top eight that event fortunately for you <laughs> that was the only time okay. in its entirety and standard <laughs> that demir cut purse top aided an event and oddly dark confidant took a little longer to figure out especially in standard because standard was very aggressive at the time you saw lightning helix but in its right. time in its time dark confidant yes went on to be a much better card a multi-format multi-format all-star it also top aided a ton more events in standard so it was really odd that demir cut purse had this one moment where it was a four of in a top eight deck at the world championships but then never was heard from again while dark confidant's one of the best of all time well let me explain why as a magic connoisseur who has played this game for years what i assume <laughs> happened is people were expecting dark confidant to be played at the worlds but no one was expecting the cut purse card to get played so when someone brought it they weren't ready for it and therefore it took over for that one tournament but then once it's in that one tournament the strategy has gone because people know what, well the strategy is now uh in the open and then therefore therefore people can start preparing for it that's me coping by the way uh, i'm glad oh I was good i'm glad okay cool I'm, gl I'm, gl <laughs> I'm glad i was right though i'm picturing how did they how did they prepare for the two mana two one without also collaterally damage preparing for the three mana two two <laughs> I don't know. I don't know either. I don't know. That was that was my, that was my logic. <laughs> Neither one dies to Doomblade because they're both black creatures. So there you You're go. You're so like, right. You're actually so just, right. Okay. Can't can't just be shot down. So obviously they're busted. No, dark. They both died to Lightning Helix. Dark Confidant is a card that if it was put in Warlock and Hearthstone, it would be meta defining. Oh yeah, Th this card is sweet. It it used to see like competitive commander play. It still sees some commander play, but it also still makes appearances in modern. It's a very beloved card. Like the, the people are proud of you. The people are proud of you for picking Dark Confidant on this day. Ron, if you watch this video by chance, can you please get in contact with me? Thank you. <laughs> the mystery <laughs> must be solved. What? Does anybody know in the comments what the hell is behind Bob Maher's uh, image there Wait, in Dark Maybe Confidant. he knows who what it is. is. That? Did he help design the art? Maybe. I don't know. Okay. I don't know. The investigation must happen. Oh, look at these two guys both flying. Woe Bringer Demon, three neutral, two black, is flying at the beginning of each player's upkeep. That player sacrifices a creature if the player can't sacrifice this card. 
sacrifices a creature and sacrificing sends them to the graveyard and this is a five mana four four that's flying okay is that really worth it all right let's let's see the other one hunted dragon three mana two red flying haste uh just remind me haste is charged in hearthstone where they could just attack immediately yep you got it okay when this comes into play put three two two white knight creature tokens with first strike into play under target opponent's control but it's a six six oh my god so both of these are cards that i i'm not sure about the black card to be honest but are good stat lines for the cost at a downside i'm assuming um mm -hmm, mm -hmm. well i mean Wobringer kind of a downside it's yeah see good. the thing is okay i'm automatic uh, automatically leaning towards the demon just because you, black seems to be really happy with just putting stuff into their graveyard anyways and i'm sure there's ways of just having tokens or something that actually wants to go to the graveyard on board before you play this and a flying four four doesn't seem that bad hunted dragon seems weird because i could be wrong about how this interaction works but when this is in play and you go to attack don't they just stack all the two twos against it so it just dies immediately they would if hunted dragon didn't have flying you're so right okay oh hold on a second that's kind of gas wait a minute that's really good they can't even okay so they need a flying wait this is like a finisher this is nuts wait a minute wait a minute wait a minute there's a card called have i ever showed you leroy jenkins and hearthstone <laughs> uh, uh, a mutual friend voxy recently introduced me to leroy jenkins <laughs> wait but was that in battlegrounds or was that in standard uh battlegrounds okay, that will that'll be out by the time that yeah that'll be out by is, the time they he watch is different this. he is different in standard than he was in battlegrounds so let me explain the difference real fast in battlegrounds he says when he is killed destroy the minion that killed it i believe that's what the text is um i'm not sure if they mm -hmm. updated Mm -hmm. in standard hearthstone he is a five mana six two that has the battle cry to summon two one one whelps for the opponent but it has charge you could probably take a guess on how good that card was for a significant amount of time in hearthstone it was very good so because oh, of leroy you, you can't block yeah well it's not that you can't well you can't block in hearthstone regardless unless they have taunt but it was like you didn't really care about the downside majority of the time because Leroy was going to be used as some kind of finisher or just use six damage to go face almost every single time. Like if you used it as removal, you felt really bad. Hunted Dragon is almost the same instance of it, but because you could block with another flying creature or if they have reach, it's like a little bit weird, but I still think it's actually really good because at five mana to deal six damage, that actually seems not bad to have a creature that does that. And if you're playing with red, which as far as i understand is a pretty aggressive class to begin with if you put this at the high end it's not bad so it really comes down to is a what i imagine a finisher as good as a demon that you're probably okay with putting stuff into the graveyard and you know what weirdly i do think it's actually pretty good so i'm gonna go with the hunted dragon you're going with hunted dragon or leroy okay. or leroy you're going with leroy <laughs> dragon got it both of these cards are pretty bad Okay. But one did see some very fringe play and it won a world championship in Paris in 2006. So I'm going with the one that won the world championship. And that card is Hunted Dragon. Yes! <laughs> Leroy! <laughs> <laughs> and oddly, it had very little to do with much else on the card except for the fact that it's a dragon because oh. Makahito Mahara brought a sick deck called Dragon Storm, which let him basically cheat a ton of dragons onto the battlefield. And he needed a critical mass of dragons with haste to one shot his opponent after casting the giant oh, spell. Oh, okay. So nice. Hunted Dragon did the job. So Hunted Dragon wins. The problem with Woebringer Demon, a lot of people thought Woebringer Demon would be the better card uh, early on in the format, but people figured out the play pattern, which is just don't play a creature if you think they're about to play Woebringer Demon and they end up just sacrificing their own stuff or it ends up just oh, stuck in their hand. I get you. So either you play something cheap you don't mind losing because it's your choice what the sacrifice is or you just pass 
and they just sit there with their Woebringer demon like, well, now if I play this, it's just going to die. Yeah, and then it rough. becomes a little bit of a standoff and you wait until things are better and their Woebringer demon never really finds a profitable board. Yeah, it could be, be really good, though. Really good. It could be. It looked really good, especially when Black likes, as you said, things going to their graveyard. It takes advantage of death triggers. Like, uh, people thought Woebringer Demon was the good card. And Hunted Dragon, why would you ever give your opponent anything? Like, what is wrong yeah. with you to be a bad card? <laughs> Dude, I literally, I think if I didn't, even though you didn't say it related, if I didn't know Leroy existed, I would have gone with Woebringer. But mm. I'm basing it purely off Leroy because Leroy was used so much in Hearthstone. Let's, <laughs> let's go, dude. I can't believe Let's go, Leroy. Leroy me, scammed it. Completely unrelated. I was just taking a sip of my water and I want to ask you a really strange question. If you're drinking okay. from a glass, okay, not like a straw because the straw is irrelevant here. If you're drinking from a glass, do you let the liquid flow into your mouth or do you kind of like slurp it? I don't drink <laughs> from a glass. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, okay. If you leave this in the video, I'm, I'm, I will be... I'm, I'm holding my G Fuel not sponsored sippy cup right now. <laughs> Wait, sippy cup? Well, kind of. Okay, I, pour, I I would say, like, to the spirit of your question, I pour. I don't, I do not slurp. Okay, Slurping so... Is, who would, who does that? <laughs> you have, like, a blending, a blender bottle, is that what it means? Or, yeah, oh, I think so, yeah. Okay, yeah. so, yeah, you let, that case, you're probably letting it pour into your mouth. It's hard to slurp it because it, like, has, like, a weird, like, yep. lip thing around it. Clearly a pour. In fact, I'm going to intentionally try to slurp here for comedy. <laughs> That's weird. That, who does, wait, what do you do? See, it's interesting. I... I caught myself slurping out of a can here and I was thinking to myself, maybe, maybe he also does it or maybe I'm weird. So I'm just, I was just kidding. Nah, that's weird. Cause like, that's weird. unless I'm really thirsty, How do you... I don't know. It's, I'm, uh, I don't know. What's the next Why character? would you? Like you already have it. Like <laughs> you have to angle it, right? You only have to angle it a little further to pour. I Why know. would you? Are I know. you like scared you're going to spill? Maybe from past experiences when I was younger, that's what it's caused it. But I, I don't think maybe. I'm like that ridiculous at spilling that it happens or I, I would build I, a habit from it um we we need some participation i need comments is is slurping normal or is pouring normal i i've got to know what the people do because now i didn't think there was really an option here pouring feels like i have less control out of a can so if i huh. so if i slurp it okay a better question would be do you ever get like coffee from like what's a good example like dunkin donuts no uh, oh, you're, wait, are you a coffee drinker? I don't even know. No, I'm okay. not. Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> no, what, it, it, finish your thought. Finish I was going to be like, okay, that's a good one because sometimes you slurp, sometimes you you pour, depending on the, the temperature of the coffee. But if it's like hot enough that you, you're not worried to burn your tongue, I usually slurp it because it's more controlled. Okay. Yeah, yeah, like a hot chocolate, right? You sometimes you just got you got a sample. You got to get a sample to see if it's going to burn you. So it's like, but the, I still like no. That's still the coward's way. That's the coward. Interesting. Way. Okay. I, yeah, okay. pour that stuff. Okay. Got to be. Uh, listen. Yeah. I I just don't want to pour. pour. I just don't want to spill. I don't know what's so weird about. That. Okay. I, I, I <laughs> maybe at game night you're supposed to slurp so you don't spill on your car. Uh, maybe know. that's the case. I don't know. Maybe one day. You mark my words one day you're gonna pour in your mouth and it's gonna go off out of your mouth onto one of your most expensive cards and you'll slurp for the rest of your life which sounds really strange <laughs> to say out loud there's literally a commercial right now in my gameplay videos of me with a five thousand dollar card on the table just pouring water on it oh. just endlessly pouring oh, why water would you, on why it. would you do that to show that ultimate guard sleeves are the best oh. protection products on the market. Okay. I Thank was you, missing, ultimate guard, I was missing for that context for the record, by the way. I thought you were just pouring it onto the card itself. Okay, no, that makes a lot more sense. All right. Anyways. Yeah, the card is still fine. I, it's, it's been, it's had gallons poured on it at this point. It's fine. It's Damn. okay. Your job's anyway, safe. what are we doing today? We're rating cards. <laughs> Sorry, I have to ask the cards. <laughs> it's an important we these are the important questions that people are here for got it okay just Ooh. okay uh blood funnel see it's crazy how the art just gets really strange over all these cards like they they all look like they're from the same set 
but they're all re like all artists have their own like flair so it's really nice i don't know if i, I don't know how much you appreciate art but it, i've been really uh fancying it recently yeah the blood funnel in particularly is it, it's a standout also i'm pretty sure on i think it's how do you even pronounce that remand Rem mm -hmm. uh is that adam driver the actor on that card we'll get to that in a second uh in 2005 i'm sure it was <laughs> All right, blood funnel, one neutral, one black. This is an enchantment. Non-creature spells you pay cost two less to play. Oh, when you play a non-creature spell, counter that spell unless you sacrifice a creature. Okay, it looks, you had to be in the first half. Uh, the second half is kind of brutal. Uh, okay, remand, one neutral, one blue. Counter target spell. If you do, return that spell to its owner hand and draw a card. Okay, so I'm immediately going to Adam Driver for this one, but let me let me try to code my way through Blood Funnel here. For context, there are spells, plenty of them that make creatures. Okay, so you play the spell. The spell doesn't actually go through though until you already count or sacrifice a creature though, right? Mm -hmm. So it's not it's not after you cast the spell it's whenever so like it has to it's okay just no but this is pretty bad uh okay well hold on two mana that basically pays for itself in a sense if you have enough creatures on board in hearthstone warlock would pay for this card like warlock would play this card there's a lot of ways to generate tokens and this is you know we've talked about it a lot but mana cheating is pretty good but also that seems like a lot of setup for potentially not enough of a payoff because if you don't actually sacrifice anything is it worth it like you're getting mana cheat but you also have to pay mana for those creatures so it doesn't really feel like it would be worth it now that being said like we've talked about in this video a lot black really likes the graveyard so this isn't actually the worst thing in the world How much was uh you show me counter spells before Are they usually around two mana what else blue use? blue 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 is the card counter spell which is kind of the iconic counter spell of its time this draws you a card this pays for itself you you, you pay two mana you draw a card and you counter a spell i dude like see oh my god this is this is more metagaming than it is anything else i think at the initial glance i'd pick the blue card but maybe in some reality blood funnel could be really good and that's the part like i, I would need to see the full what, what you're going for to really understand it is there a, can you tell me this is there a spell that says if this spell is countered do something good if the spell is countered do something good is there ever a card like that in magic no i can't think of one oh, okay no there's For, some... from this set comments okay <laughs> okay i was gonna say that's some design they can look at if they haven't actually done that ever no I, i'm going with adam driver i i don't know i can't <laughs> adam driver i can't <laughs> I can't even i don't want to see adam driver every time i see this card for the rest of my life so i'm kind of resenting this already you're going with remand yes good because remand Woo! is correct and it's it's definitely not close i had a terrible time trying to find a pairing for remand remand of course goes on to not just top eight worlds but to be one of the more busted cards in the format for its entire existence it's absolutely insane to counter the spell and draw the card for two mana like it made three four and five mana cards feel unplayable for periods of time in standard like it's absolutely cracked and i had a horrible time finding something to go against it so i just went for some hardcore bait blood funnel has never seen play <laughs> okay. it, it never worked i just tried to find something <laughs> in a it was really hard to find a pairing for remand to just try to get you but uh, you got it you you, Thank you remand is the card blood funnel is most people have probably never seen this card for good reason too much setup doesn't do the job not that good never top eight at anything in its life would you play blood funnel if it was zero mana maybe whenever you play a non-creature spell counter unless you sack a creature at that point there's got to be something somewhere that starts to break 
you know? Yeah, yeah that's what I'm be. asking. Because there are spells, <clears throat> and there are, of course, creatures that just make more creatures. Like, there are, there are cards that make a creature every turn that you could sack to this. So there's got to be something at that point. There's got to be something. At least it would become interesting. But yeah, it it never saw play in its standard time, of course. Okay. Oh my God, what is that name? Uh, hold on, let's try to pronounce this. Cilicia? Silencia? I don't. It sounds like it's Italian. I. There's something about the way you long pronounce an S in my headphones that is particularly <laughs> painful, but uh, so I'll just help out and say it's Selesnia Guild. Oh, okay. I'm not really pronouncing the N as much as I would like to there. What, what is, uh, is that like a tribe? What is that? Selesnia is the guild uh, for green and white. So there were 10 guilds, one for each combination of colors in Ravnica, that's what the site is built around. So every single guild also had a guild mage. This is the one from the green okay. and white uh, group. And I don't know if I've seen mana like that in the top right before, maybe I have. So I'm guessing that you could just e use either green or white to use it. Yep, known okay. as hybrid mana. Oh, it says about, it's the first line of the card. Okay. <laughs> uh, okay, uh, three neutral, one green, put a one, one green, Sapperling creature token into play. Three neutral, one white. Creatures you control get plus one, plus one until end of turn, and it's a two, two. So a one, one green token into play. Creatures you control get plus one, plus one until the end of turn. Okay. Hunted horror, two black. Trample when hunted horror comes into play. Put two, three, three green centaur creature tokens with protection from black into play under target opponent's control, and it's a seven, seven. My God, what's per wait with protection? So protection from black means if a black source deals damage to this card, it prevents all of that damage. Uh, okay. Something with protection from black also can't be targeted by a black spell or ability. And something with protection from black cannot be blocked by a black creature. Oh, what is the point of hunted horror? Interesting. See, it's a two mana seven. Yeah, it's a, seven. It's, I mean, but you just block it with the center creatures, and then it's like, what's the point? You know, like, see, at Hearthstone, if it said like Battle Cry, like, which means you have to play it from hand, and then you could like resummon it so you get a seven seven with trample, like that, that seems like it might actually be played. But how in the world does this ever get played? At least the other one. Both of like the abilities the guild mage has is like fine. You put a one one or you buff your whole board, which could actually be really relevant. It's only two, it's two mana. It's two mana. They're both two mana, but this, no, there's no, I can't, I can't. No, it's, it's the guild mage. There's, I can't. Hold on, let me go for one second. I'm in a seven, seven. And then gets Do you want any other context? Okay, sure, like, give me context. Maybe here. some things benefit from a certain having a lot of power on the board or, or <laughs> a big creature of some kind. You know, normally maybe there are cards that give creatures minus three, minus three, and uh, don't kill a seven, oh, seven. So you're saying that you would play this, and then you'd have another non-black spell that would answer the two tokens on board, and then you have a seven, seven on board. What if I told you, like, your opponent also just has removal for this? It doesn't die to Doomblade. It's a black creature, so I don't know what you're talking about. No, uh, you know what? I think you're baiting me. I'm going, I'm going with the guild mage. Yeah, it's the guild mage. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Uh, yeah, people got really excited about Hunted Horror because there are cards that, like, are draw cards equal to a creature's power. There are cards that are, like, three oh. damage to all creatures. And they were like, yeah, this setup is absolutely sick. And it was hard to kill. Like, Doomblade, like I said, didn't kill it. And Lightning Helix didn't kill it. Uh, it's very big, but it's still, like, all that was too much setup. It didn't make the cut in competitive events. While Selesnya Guild Mage uh, was in the top eight of the World Championships that of a month later it was a, a four nice. of in one of those decks it did very very well and it's still when people look at selesnia guild mage today it doesn't look particularly playable the abilities are fine and that's all that you all it really had to be is it was a good support character yeah no okay no i i, I just need the second like you want more context i'm like this guy's fucking 
the snow ways. Yeah, 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 yeah. I want to. Uh, you, you're doing too good. You're doing Thank too you. good. I got to make it Thank interesting. You. I, w- I woke up after the first one. <laughs> the first one was just my own. <laughs> Okay. Yeah, turning it on here. Let's see if you can keep it rolling. Like, what is that? <laughs> Which one? The elephant. What's the elephant? It's an elephant with a five finger hand. What do you want from me? <laughs> he... Elephant cleric. No, you're okay. He's he's just I don't know. Uh, two neutral, one green, one white. When this card comes into play, you gain four life. Sacrifice this plus... Loxodon Hierarch. Loxo... Well, sorry. I, I could have pronounced the name, but I was too busy looking at the sacrifice thing when I, when I looked at the elephant. <laughs> Wait, hold on a second. So let me get something straight here. You sacrifice this card, the Loxodon Hierarch. Um, you play... So if you're opponent plays like an aoe and then you sacrifice this because you could tap it on your opponent's turn right or no yeah you can activate this on your opponent's turn that means the aoe doesn't affect the rest of your creatures if it's an aoe that reads destroy that is correct if it does damage it doesn't work like that if it does damage and the damage is lethal it also works that way uh there are also terms like bury and exile that this does not apply to Okay. You also gain for life when this comes into play, though. This elephant. It's also a good stat line. Like, four mana for a 4-4? Four, four? Okay, it's kind of nuts. Or one green, one white. I'm not sure how... Have you shown me a green and white, though? I guess you have, yeah. We just saw one. Okay. Uh, Who's this? Mori? Moroi? Sure. More. I never, I never, fa- like, it's it's up for debate. Let's put it that way. Moroi. Moroi. Uh, two neutral, one white, one black. Flying at the beginning of your upkeep, you lose one life. Four, four flying. Four mana, and you lose one life. That doesn't seem like that bad of a payoff. But both of these are four mana for a four, four. But one of them gives you four life, and the other one's just basically flying. No, I don't like Moroi. What the hell is that thing, too? Actually, it looks like a Dark Souls boss. It does, actually. Actually, that's a, a perfect description. It, this, I, I don't know. I'm re- the, the problem with uh, Moroi is just a horrible name. Um, the problem with it is like the longer this stays on board, potentially the longer it hurts you, but. Flying has to be at a premium cost, I would imagine. That seems like a very good mechanic in magic. So losing one life to have flying doesn't actually seem that bad, and you get a 4 4. The one thing I can see is this card just gets removed, and then it's like, okay, whatever. Same as the cleric, but potentially with the sacrifice, it could be so game winning, and you get four life from this. This one's the hardest one I think you've given me because both of them have a use case. It really depends on what archetype is uh, probably better at the time. I'm going to go with the. Um, the locks and on the big elephant i actually Going with the elephant i think gaining for life into play is really good especially because you can't cap at health you can go to like 24 or whatever even if you're not healing or if you're at full life sorry like not like in hearthstone and then the sacrifice could be really good so yeah i'll go with the i'll go with the elephant you are Correct. Loxodon Hierarch is the better card. This was a close one. Both cards were people were very interested in. And on paper, a lot of people thought that like four mana, four, four flyer was very good rate, like very, very good rate for the time. So people were excited about Moroi. <laughs> I don't know if that's I, I still sit that I like I just like the way that works. But Loxodon Hierarch didn't I get the buzz of Moroi, but uh, came out of the gate swinging and did see heavy play in competitive formats from the very beginning. And it turned out that gaining four life, this is one of the first life gain cards that I think people realize life gain could be good because a lot of people made fun of new players for always overvaluing life gain because as the game went longer, you just kind of 
grind it out and whoever has card advantage like that was who really won the game right yeah but as the format got more aggressive and as tempo became a thing people started to appreciate life gain more and this was one of the cards that helped people learn about that as for protecting from board wipes it came up now and then but it wasn't it, it barely got used like it was really hard to have this down and have the mana up and use it and also have like the big board versus the aoe moment maybe it was the a subject like kind of a thing of the meta but it was often flavor text on the card so there'll be plenty of stories about times when it got used to good effect but for the most part you were really happy about the four life from this and it was a good learning moment for how healing and magic could be a good thing and not just a noob ability so yeah, Loxodon Hierarch is the banger. Let's go. Of these two. Was was it were you always allowed to go above 20 in magic? Was that always the rules? That was always oh, them rules. Always the rules. Right. Yep. <laughs> always them their rules. Go above 20. It's, yes. It's funny because in classic Hearthstone, um Warrior can gain armor, which is over like basically overhealing. And that just made it a better class majority than priest, which had the ability to heal but they couldn't gain armor so mm. why would you play the card that could heal when you could just go above 30 which was such a big deal in most games because if you're going against the combo deck that could just nuke you you'd rather have extra health ah uh, yeah i i never i guess i never stopped to think about that i always find the armor thing confusing of like you have a health total but then you also have an armor total it like still gets me i'm it like always I don't Listen, know why that blows my mind. You're gonna when we do our video, you're gonna have to pay attention to that. That's a, okay. That's a big deal. noted. That's, that's gonna come up. All right, great. Uh, yeah, those of you watching, there's going to be another recording after that. Watch for it on Raren's channel. Thank you. Uh, I've got two more. I've got right. two more of these for you. Okay. Just two more, and you're on a roll. So don't don't trip at the end, okay? Wow, we don't want okay. to embarrass Let's you relax. in front of the Let's world. Let's relax. 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 <laughs> all right, all right. I'm gonna slurp my drink real fast. Hold on. Does slurping make you smarter? This, it can't Maybe. be. It can't be. <laughs> Imagine that's the secret. Okay. Uh, all right. Sun Home Fortress of the Legion. This is a land. You tap, you add one mana to your pool. I'm guessing that's any mana or just a neutral mana? It's a neutral mana. Okay. Uh, two neutral, one red, one white, and you tap this. Target creature gains double strike until the end of turn. Okay, that's really spicy in itself it's fine that extra effect can be really good double strike i would imagine could be very good on this very specific minion okay uh Vito gotsi i had like a t in there gossy the city tree uh tap same thing add a mana to your pool and then two neutral one green one white and then tap put a one one green sap rolling creature token into play so this is like a hmm basically you're asking me is it better to summon a 1-1 token or is it better to give a creature double strike double strike only gets better depending on the minion that it's added to having 1-1 tokens every single turn this is untapped could be really good because like that's just value and maybe at some point it gets pretty spicy you know what's really interesting about this the second one is the hero power on paladin which was basically spent two mana and you get a 1-1 one, one person on the battlefield. And for a long time, that was okay. Just because the metagame wasn't very strong or the metagame wasn't like trying to kill you. Sometimes it would grind out the game and over a long period of time, those 1-1s one, could add up. But there's no hero power in Hearthstone that has double strike. Now, I just want to clarify what double strike is. Hey, it literally, is it just Wind Fury like it is in Hearthstone? Like you just, the thing attacks twice? It, to me, it feels 99% like Wind Fury, yeah. Uh, and I, I played, on Battlegrounds, I played against what was like a quest, re, like uh, it was basically a hero power that gave out Wind Fury and it sucked. Oh. <laughs> it was so mean. It was so Oh, nasty. it sucked to play against. Oh, yeah. Okay. It was not fun to was, play against I was at like, all. It sounds like it's, a skill diff. Uh, not... my, yeah, yeah. There was an experience. I, I had an experience. We'll put it that way. Okay. So if that's the this one's tough don't get me wrong because i think over a long game the one one will be good but i'm pretty confident double strike is like the turbo nuts and majority of your games i'd rather close out a game than make it continue going on with a bunch of one ones 
The only reason the one lens might be better is like if there's a combo with having like these sapperlings on board, but I think double strikes is way better. So you're going with Sun Home Fortress. Yes. Both of these cards are very low uh, opportunity cost. You know, a land spot in your deck, right? right? And then you get some sweet benefits. So both of these are good. Both of them saw play. But one saw significantly more play than the other. One was often a four of in decks, while the other was the occasional one of. And the card that saw more play is Vitugazi, the city tree. Really? Yes. Oh, God, did they love making their little 1-1 one, one sapperling creature tokens uh, from from the very first event. And, and part of the next pair I'm going to show you is going to be a hint as to why. There were... There were cards that really liked having tokens. They really, okay. really liked it. So there was kind of a synergy thing. Uh, Sun Home was often a one of in the Angel Fire type deck that we discussed earlier. There were a few decks along the way that played one of it because it was low opportunity cost, but it was rarely like a point of the deck. It didn't come up as a relevant factor in hardly any games. Whereas Vitugazi the City Tree was a strategy all of its own, four of in many, many decks, including the World Championships, top eight. Interesting. Okay. So attrition mattered more than just ending your opponent's yeah. life? Indeed, indeed. Okay. Uh, there's also some people in the comments are going to be shouting Sheldorn Outpost, Sheldorn Outpost, um, Counterpost. Those boomers, like me, <laughs> uh, had this experience with a card called Sheldorn, K-J-E-L-D-O-R-N, Keljorn Outfit Post, which was a land that would make soldier tokens. And back in the day, one of the more popular control decks, I certainly loved it, was a deck that played this card as its only win con and just countered everything and made one ones until they died. Ah. Oh. Oh, it's so much fun. Oh. It, was, it was a disgusting just having your win con built into a land. And the reason I mentioned that is because when people saw Vidugazi the city tree, they saw another opportunity to try to build a deck like that with your win con being this dirtily take forever land and getting to play a very reactive deck. See, Although the green white decks didn't always play out that way. They had other synergies. Interesting. No, it, it, I was comparing it to the Paladin hero power and in long games yeah it does matter because like having the extra one one every single turn is pretty relevant but i'm surprised that double strike is not more effective i guess because creatures were still not like very good that you needed it maybe and you'd just rather have like an infinite supply I the thing that's hard to explain like is how the long game plays out in hearthstone versus magic if you've never done both in hearthstone you're always drawing spells in magic, eventually you draw a useless land. You didn't need your seventh land. That's also or your fair, eighth sure. land or your ninth land. So every turn that the opponent is drawing a card that's not relevant to the board state, uh, like another land or a removal spell or something, and you're making a one one, you're getting further and further ahead. Yeah, I, I guess and that's over also time. Yeah, it, it will matter. <laughs> and like you can also block with the one ones too. Like that's the other thing. Yeah, uh, that's so, like, true that's, as well. That's the other. I don't know. It's interesting because um, I feel like the Paladin here in power, unless my mind is lying to me, wasn't really good until a card called Baku the Moon Eater came out, which like upgraded your hero power. So it's, rather than summoning one, you summon two, which was really, really good. Um, but most of the time, like having the extra one, one was really relevant. So that's where my mind was. At least. Double strike. Would well, be so now hard. that now that, you know, it's video Gazi. And I agree, Double Strike is pretty nuts. In Commander, people love Sun Home Fortress. Okay. Oh my gosh, yes. The big explosive format with access to all of the most powerful creatures of magic history loves this card. Okay. <laughs> Absolutely. That makes more sense. Like, yeah. I'm going to let you uh, kind of build your own. Which one of these cards do you think really broke Vitugazi? Okay. So these these are linked to that the land. Doubling season, if an effect would put one or more tokens into play under your control, it puts twice that many into play. Okay. If an effect would place one or more counters on a permanent you control, it places twice that many on the permanent set. So this card basically is what Baku the Meaner was for Paladin. Like it, the ability to have to summon two one ones got a little spicy. Uh, glare of subdual, subdual, sorry, uh, two white, one green, and two neutral. 
I said, sorry, that was incorrect. One white, one green, two neutral. <laughs> Still, <laughs> Jesus. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're, uh, you're doing it. You're doing tap it. Tap okay. an untapped uh, creature you control. Target. Oh my God. Tap target artifact or creature. Tap an untapped creature you control. Tap target artifact or creature. So you untap one of your creatures and then you can tap one of their creatures. Or you artifacts. tap one of your untapped creatures to tap one of their creatures or artifacts. Your creature. Okay, needs so you to be tap one of your creatures to tap one of their creatures. Mm -hmm. it's, a, it's like a one for one trade. So, okay, I now understand what you mean. So you could tap one of your one one token boys to tap one of their creatures, and that could be very strong. Or an artifact. Both of these are pretty nuts, bro. And they're both enchantments, so they just sit on the board, right? That's right. Why not run both? <laughs> Am I right? Uh, you can't. You could. I guarantee. I guarantee it was tried. The one one of these went on to be uh, an absolute rock star. The other, uh, an overhyped preseason card. Okay. Well, you <laughs> you told me that games would go on for a while, so I think immediately a lot of people would pick tapping a creature and tapping one of your opponent's stuff because I feel like that's very strong. But if the game does go on long enough and you're just hoping that you just, if your opponent just draws lands or you just draw lands, something two one one tokens could be a really big deal. And that's an effect that keeps on going and it keeps on giving. And you could have multiple of these lands also as well at the same time that could do the effect. So I'm gonna go with doubling season. Also, I might be biased because of how Baku worked with Paladin, but I feel like that's insane. Doubling season is insane. In standard, though, it was not the card. Ah. <laughs> In standard, it was glare of sub duel. The world championship again happening a month after the release of this set. The Japanese team that put three members in the top eight, which is very impressive for such an event. They ran a deck that went on to be known as Gazi Glare. And it is named that because of Vitu Gazi, the city tree and glare of sub duel four of both of those cards. The one ones, along with the Selesnya Guild Mage tokens that it could create, let them lock down their opponent's creatures and just drag the game out, eventually overpowering them by making more tokens and pumping them up with the Selesnya Guild Mage that we saw earlier. Okay. Oh. Okay, so it was like a Wombo combo, I got you, okay. Over time, it just kind of went big. There were some other really fun things in the deck that I didn't get to show you because the cards weren't from this set with like, there were some neat combos with a big old dragon called Yose the Morning Star. But Doubling Season, you did identify correctly is a powerful card. I think, honestly, we only scratched the surface of its power. The effect of placing twice as many counters on a card was particularly exciting because a lot of Planeswalkers and like all Planeswalkers have loyalty counters. They enter with loyalty counters. So if you play Doubling Season and a Planeswalker and entered with double loyalty, which often let it do its most powerful effect immediately. Doubling oh. Season... Yeah, yeah, it was insane. Uh, any plus one, plus one counters get doubled. Any kind of counter related stuff gets doubled. Doubling season is a crazy card, but in fast standard, it was five mana do nothing on its own. And you couldn't take turn five off in this standard format. But doubling season is still a beloved commander card and people play this card a lot in commander. It is a super powerful effect. And there's a reason it was so hype in preview season because of all the things it can do. It just wasn't a standard card. Okay. Yeah. Yep. I yeah. want for both these cards, by the way. I just want you to know Hearthstone failed me because I was basing this purely off pal Paladin Zero Power. Uh, it sounds more like Paladin failed you. Yep. <laughs> to be honest. It did. <laughs> Does Paladin often fail people in Hearthstone? No. No. <laughs> just you. <laughs> it's. It is. Um. It is the white, uh, color of Hearthstone. And I feel like it's failed me. I feel like every time I've picked a Paladin card, it's been bad. That's that's oh. my memory. It might be very biased and selective, but I feel you get me on Paladin cards I more than yourself. most things. Good I job. shouldn't share this with you, by the way. It's fine. You're gonna you're gonna use this against I, me. No, okay, I'm not gonna say anything. No, no you're good. You're good. Mm -hmm. So you did good. Thank you. You went you went eight and three in Ravnica. Thank you. Eight and three in Ravnica City of Guilds. So uh, yeah, I'm sure that the people who were around for this set really enjoyed this look back on the set that saved Magic the Gathering from evil Muradin block, which I might show you someday. It'll be fun.
Well, you have to show me now. I guess I do. <laughs> Promise? Promise. Okay, nice. Pinky swear. We're going to do Mirrodin. We're going to do Mirrodin. Okay. I'm in. That'll be the end. That'll be the cut. Okay. Okay. <laughs> I will stop.